What is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you? Story one. Quite a few years ago, I was spending an afternoon with my best friend who was house sitting for a wealthy family with a pool. We were tanning topless, as you do, and I decided to send a pic to a guy I was dating at the time. About an hour later, a friend messaged and said he was surprised that I'd have the balls to post something like that on my FB profile. I wasn't sure what he was talking about, and then in clicked. The photo I thought I had sent through text to my guy at the time had in fact been posted to my Facebook profile, where everyone, including my grandparents, could see it. To make matters worse, I couldn't for the life of me get connected to the Wi-Fi and was having a very hard time deleting said picture. Won't likely ever live that one down. Story 2. Well, it was funny and embarrassing for both of us. I was in college and used to travel by public bus. Since it was winters, I always used to feel sleepy, and when one feels sleepy, they yawn. So do I, of course. So the bus was pretty much empty except one guy who was sitting on one of the seats opposite to me. I have a habit of sitting alone by the window so I was yawning badly, and whenever I yawn, my eyes become watery so I was wiping the water off in such a way that that to someone else it would look like I was crying and wiping my tears off. That was what that guy thought, and he said to me, don't cry in sign language, and I was shocked and gave him a blank expression. And that's when the poor guy understood that I wasn't crying. He changed his seat the next moment and didn't even look back once after that. Story 3 when I was about 12 or 13, I was at a water park in El Paso, Texas called Wet and Wild. There was a slide called The Screamer, which was pretty much a straight drop. I went down and didn't notice my trunks were all the way up my butt. Looked like I was wearing some sort of thick thong. I'm a male B to you. Anyways, there was a lot of spectators, and I noticed a bunch of good-looking girls laughing at me, and I didn't know why. When I noticed my atomic wedgie, I was so embarrassed, I yanked my trunks down as fast as I could. Maybe a bit too hard because I pulled them down to my ankles, and now my whole package is showing and laughter erupted. Boy, was that embarrassing at the time. Story 4. I had to do a public speaking assignment in college and tried to use a general outline instead of a manuscript. Halfway through, I lost my place and my brain emptied out. I muttered, oh God, and stayed quiet for what seemed like two minutes. My face turned red and I started sweating. I managed to pull myself together and sputter out the rest of my speech, pulling everything I could recall. When it was over, I asked my classmates how bad I bombed. Most said that I was only quiet for a few seconds, but could see I panicked. My speech was coherent, but came out half-baked. I did a lot better on my next assignment. Speaking off the cuff is not for everyone. Story 5. I was traveling in England on a Euro rail pass. As a Canadian, I was surprised to be offered beer or wine on the train. I've always been a light drinker, one beer with lunch. When I had the can of beer in my hand, I opened the zip top only to find the spray shooting straight up in the air. That was a drag because about half the can was wasted. However, a very polite English gentleman in a three-piece suit got sprayed accidentally. I was horrified and apologized profusely. He was very gracious and didn't blame me. I'm sure that he had an interesting story to tell. Most Brits can't differentiate between a Canadian and American accent. So I would imagine that the story started out. This American chap on the train today. Story 6. Oh man, I've had many embarrassing moments in life. Most of my stories revolve around my impeccable digestive tract. Recently, my in-laws were visiting us. We decided to go to this park up in the mountains, the kind of park you could only access via ski lift. Anywho, we are walking around the park when all of a sudden I feel my stomach make a rumble sound. I try to casually pass gas as respectfully as I can in a crowded walkway. Mind you, we're waking through a starlight attraction. There's lots of people and it's drizzling, which makes the trail slippery. When we get close to the end of the trail, I couldn't hold it any longer. Mind you, it's a solid 10-minute walk uphill, which was very steep to the nearest restroom, which happened to be three small stalls and a camper type thing. By the time I get there, I've got the sweats going on. If you've never had the poop sweats, I'm envious of you. Needless to say, I blew that bathroom up. I was in there for 20 minutes, full of shame as each unsuspecting woman would come in and make comments about how bad it smelled in there. Unfortunately, this was my fault or make a sound reminiscent of a P.U. with a sigh. Anywho, while I sit there, sweaty and ashamed, my spouse texts me wondering how much longer I'll be as my in-laws are now outside waiting for me. I begged my wife to take them to another area of the park. When I finally finished, I started panicking as I couldn't find the way to flush the toilet. Turns out the flusher was on the floor and you stepped on it! Huzzah! I waited until I could no longer hear anyone else in the bathroom, washed my hands and got the heck out of there. However, Due to being so sweaty and the way I had just disappeared from our group, everyone in the family was adamant about asking me if I was okay and if I needed anything. I couldn't bring myself to tell them the reason why I looked so disheveled was because I had to poop. Story 7. When I was in my early 20s, I worked in a grocery store in a small town. A guy who worked there has parents who are very attractive. They were divorcing at the time. 
Some of the other dudes were giving him a hard time, joking about his mom being hot and how they were going to take her out and whatnot. I made a comment one day about how hot his dad is and said, Better watch out. I'm going to be your mom soon. He told his dad what I said, and a couple days later when the dad was in the store, he looked me dead in the face and said, Sup, mama? The dude was behind him, hyperventilating with laughter, and I wanted to absolutely pass away. Story 8. I posted this in Tifu, but we'll share here too. I was at a week-long training in another city with a co-worker for peer support certification. Basically working with people who have addiction behavioral struggles, who need casual, friendly assistance with a variety of things. We had one of those break the ice exercises on day one. I ran to the bathroom while they explained it, and when I got back, people were writing on note cards. I asked my coworker what they were doing, and she said, write a secret. The job deals with a lot of emotions, and personal experiences with addiction and mental health struggles are a plus. So I thought this was some soul-searching exercise or something. Like we'd burn them at the end or some dramatic cow. I write that I feel like a terrible father and sometimes regret having kids. I fold it up and then pocket it. Then I hear, okay, I'm going to collect them now. I'm thinking, is this a trust thing? Okay, whatever. He then puts them all in a bucket and shakes it. Fudge. So he pulls the first card and it reads, I was bit by a shark. And everyone points to this one guy and he's like, ah, you got me. Then he reads more and these are some weak secrets, I'm thinking. Never been to Canada. I was in a movie, etc. After each one, the group identifies the writer. Of course, mine is the last flipping one and my coworker goes, I guess we know who this one is. I had to sit and listen to this dude read my secret to a room full of silent, stunned people. Turns out we were supposed to write a fun fact and my coworker misworded it. Bad person. Story 9. I was riding my bike home from work one day in a downtown area during rush hour. I glance over and see the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. I'm awestruck, just entranced. I look forward again and a curb is coming up quick, so I tried to pull the front end of the bike up to not hit the curb. When I pulled up, the front wheel fell off. My forks planted and I went head first over the handlebars and face planted into the sidewalk, in front of all the people sitting in traffic, in front of this gorgeous woman, in front of God himself. The girl is immediately all, OMG, are you okay? I sheepishly say I'm fine, just a little scraped up. Man, was that a hit to the ego? Story 10. Mm, the only one I care to share is from 1986, or so age 16-ish. I was, let's call it pretty flamboyantly punk androgynous for a dude at the time, and very sensitive about being misgendered, though we didn't have that concept then. I promise this will be relevant later. At a Vancouver Canucks hockey game with my dad versus the Edmonton Oilers, so King Gretzky days. He had an impressive night. <laughs> okay, back to story. Pre-game carrying snack tray with drinks towards our seats. This was when people still smoked cigarettes everywhere, and somebody walking past accidentally burned my arm with their cig. I reflexively yelled, BAD PERSON, and flinched hard, flinging all the drinks and hot dogs all over the people walking in front of us. Dude spun around, ready to pound me, but my awesomely soft-spoken pastor dad immediately stepped in front and managed to defuse stuff pretty quickly, and the dude ended up laughing and shaking our hands? Props to some Canadian stereotypes re good-natured ease. This dude looked like Paul Bunyan's big brother. Of course, people had stopped to watch as soon as I'd yelled bad person at the top of my lungs. In front of my pastor dad, who I've never heard actively use a swear word. But people seemed to grok what had happened. Except one little kid who, as dude was walking away, yells out, Daddy, that girl peed her pants. And remember, I'm a sensitive dude. Causing a new batch of passersby to wheel and stare. I hadn't noticed that the massive splashback had made it look perfectly like I'd pissed a gallon in my orange jeans. Almost as bad was when we got to our seats and reverend. Dad asked me, ahem, bad person? Really? Oh, dad, my filthy mouth was the very least of things you should have been worried about back then. Story 11. Picture this, I'm at school. I was like 14. At school, I was a tiny bit bashful, but other than that, I was a fairly normal run-of-the-mill kid. I need to sneeze. I try to hold it back best I can to make it as discreet as humanly possible. I failed. Not to mention I also farted simultaneously. The fart was loud not like it needed to be. I was in the middle of a mock test, so everyone was dead silent when this happened. Pretty much everybody starts laughing, as you expect teenagers to do. Eventually, I start laughing as well, seeing the funny side of the situation. Even the teacher was laughing and trying her best to hide it. I find it flipping hilarious now, but I was definitely quite embarrassed about it at the time. Story 12. My first UTI, I didn't know what it was. My mom never believed me, so I never told her of the pain I was in and went to school really uncomfortably. Walking back from school, which was about 45 minutes walk, ended up wetting myself as I couldn't control it or find a loo anywhere in time. There was one man behind me. He must have noticed but never said anything and carried on walking. Ended up crying from embarrassment and pain. 
I get them frequently and severely, and whilst that's been the only time I've done that, I refuse to leave the house for first few days just in case. Even my partner doesn't know this, so using my other Reddit account, Story13, this was in school. I, a 14-year-old male in secondary school at the time, had always been a smart, well-behaved student and relatively introverted person. And back then, I had a really big issue with my eyes being red and always watering. For example, I found it hard to look at something or someone without my eyes starting to water, and the weather always aggravated this so much. So, one day at lunch break, it was particularly windy, and my eyes started watering again, so I wiped my tears away. And right then, the head teacher who I'm friendly with pulled me aside and asked if I was okay in a concerned tone. She had mistaken me for being sad and crying, and so I told her someone had poked me in the eye, as I figured it would be a good excuse. But then she followed up with who, and then I started to panic, so I corrected myself and said I meant that I poked myself in the eye and I was fine now. She said okay, evidently unconvinced, and let me go. At the end of the school day, one of my friends told me to go see the head of year, and then she told me that the head teacher had told her what happened with me at break and was checking to see if I was okay. Then I said I was fine and struggled to stop my eyes from watering. She told me my eye was really red, and I was like, I poked myself in the eye, so that's probably why. But then she hit me with the, why are both eyes red? I couldn't hold it in anymore, and the tears came. Ever since then, it's been really awkward between me and her, and I've never told anyone about what happened. Story 14. I was at university with a few people I'd known from school. Let's call one of them Katie, because that was her name. Katie moved in with a couple of people I'd met at uni. There was some nonsense drama, and they all fell out big time. Katie moved out. A few days later, I saw Katie walking down the other side of the street. I shouted hello and gave her a wave. Totally blanked me. At this point, I think that she's pissed off with me, and I really don't want to fall out with someone I've known since I was six over some nonsense that was nothing to do with me. So I chase after her, shouting her name. Eventually, I catch up and she turns around, looking somewhat afraid, to see what the loud, bad person chasing her wants. Wasn't Katie. Katie was cool with me. That's the most embarrassing one I want to relate anyway. Don't want to revisit anything worse. Story 15. I would say the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me was when I was in a Kohl's store and went to try on a shirt. Normally, I wear a large, but for some odd reason, I didn't check the size of the shirt. I only looked at the hanger. I ended up getting stuck in the shirt and having to request from assistance from one of the store clerks to get it off. The shirt was a medium. The clerk was a really good sport about it. I tried to be too, but I was really dying from embarrassment. She literally had to help me out of the shirt, so not cool. If she didn't help me out of the shirt, I don't know what would have happened. Story 16. Dear God, I never wish this on anyone, but it happened to me. I was at Walgreens picking up a script for my child's earache. Suddenly, I had to sit on the floor, turned ashen, spewed vomit everywhere, and explosive diarrhea in my pants. I and everyone back there was mortified. I have no idea what made me sick. Years later, I am thinking, why didn't anyone help me? I understand it was disgusting and all, but no one asked if I needed help or if they could call someone. I cleaned it up myself while there. I couldn't and wouldn't let the employees do it. It was my mess. I took the cleanup to the dumpster, too. I didn't go back to Walgreens for a couple of years from embarrassment. Story 17. Got pulled over once outside a firm I was working for a stolen car. I'm thrown on the ground and Trooper over me holding a gun, yelling, while Trooper 2 runs all my info, as all 100-plus people I worked with are leaving the lot passing by slowly looking at me, laid out like a bad person. Apparently, they seen my truck earlier and it had been reported stolen and person who stole it had a weapon which took place in Virginia with the same truck model, color, and tag number, which mine is from Pennsylvania, and they realized post-running my info I was entirely the wrong person and super apologetic nest day at the office. No one wanted to walk to lunch with me or remotely go near my truck lol. Story 18. Probably the time I accidentally peed myself right before I could reach the toilet in first grade. More context. I was having lunch and suddenly I had to pee super bad. I'm not sure why, if I had to guess, maybe it's because I forgot to pee that morning before I went to school. Anyway, I thought I could hold it until I was done with lunch. As I was leaving, I passed by a bathroom that we were told we weren't allowed to use cause. That's the sixth grader's bathroom. And again, I thought I could hold it. I went past my locker and decided to put away my lunchbox first. Again, thinking I could still hold it because it would just take a moment. Well, the stupid lunchbox didn't want to stay in place and kept falling down again and again and again. So I got fed up and decided to just throw it in there and slam the door as fast as I could. Well, it fell down again before I could shut it and I bent the locker door closing it. I stopped once or twice heading to the first grader's bathroom because I was wondering if I should try to fix it first. I didn't like half the locker sticking out like that because I had bullies and figured they'd want to mess with it if they saw that. But then I was like, whatever, I gotta pee. At this point, it's obvious I made several mistakes. But to be fair, I had never peed myself in a public place before. 
so I didn't think it was a problem. Anyway, I scrambled into the bathroom going as fast as I could, shut the door, and soon as I turned around, the pee shot out of me. I didn't even get a chance to pull my pants down. I froze and didn't know what to do because no one told us what to do if we have an accident. I figured I had to tell someone but didn't want to go to them with wet pants. I took them off but then realized I can't go up to someone half in a school, so I put them back on. This was during recess so I spent the whole time in the bathroom trying to figure out what to do and I couldn't figure it out. At some point I ran out of ideas and just stood there staring at the mess and frozen. That all wasn't even the worst part. Suddenly when recess was over someone came into the bathroom, they stopped, covered their mouth and started laughing. They left, came back with their friend and they both were laughing, then they left and came back with one or two more. Rinse and repeat. Soon half the girls in my class were in there laughing at me. Finally, the teacher came in and was all like, what's going on? And she made them go back to class and help me get some fresh clothes. But seriously, who the hell thinks something like that is even funny? Part of me hopes they got in trouble for laughing at me, but I don't think they did. They should have. I just can't understand why someone would laugh at that, and not just one person. Story 19. When I was eight, I was at my dad's baseball game. This was in Bulgaria, in a town that had literally just the baseball field, nothing around it, and I had to poop. I stayed sitting on the bench because I thought if I sit down, nothing can come out. Everything was fine and dandy till my dad asked me to grab something from the car, which was parked at the end of right field. I started sprinting, hoping to get what I needed and back before the poop could come out. When I got to the car, I started frantically searching and couldn't find it and then poop. This isn't even the worst part. I had to take my underwear off, of course, and so I opened the driver door and the back left passenger door to go in between. As I was doing that, a group of teenagers was walking towards me on the same side of the street. They saw everything. Story 20. Having an anxiety or panic attack, IDK, during a concert in front of hundreds of people. Then I cried for hours. My friend's mom child, who is one year younger than me, was confused as fudge, performing in front of everyone for Christmas. Everyone who performed, me and my classmates, had to be in groups of two to dance. I was the only one who didn't have a group. Story 21. When this kid just straight up insulted me in the middle of class in front of two teachers back when I was in high school, the teacher sitting next to him started scolding and said, Hey! He might not like that, but the kid just put his hands up, shrugged his shoulders and asked, Why not? He's super cyogen blue. Kid then turns to me and gestures at me Wathba hand before shrugging his shoulders again and saying, He doesn't care. All while he had a cow eating grin in his face. As if what he was doing was funny. I then spoke up and said, Okay, but kid's name you don't say that about other people the other teacher in the room for soak reason then told me i needed to calm down why i don't know she then turned to the kid and told him that i was right you don't say those things and told him not to do it again theb kid just went bruh rolled his eyes with a smile and turned back to do his schoolwork i just sat there wondering really he insulted me twice in a row in front of you guys and made the dumbest justification ever and you just tell him not to do again like he's four years old letting him get away with that. It wasn't even really the insult that affected me, but more the fact this kid just so confidently insulted out loud in class in front of two teachers and tried to justify it by basically saying I didn't care, acting like it wasn't even a big deal. Kid was also a known jackass as he would constantly make an anti-Semitic remarks similar to what Eric Cartman would say in South Park. Story 22, 7th grade, gym locker room. We all came back inside to change and wait for the bell to ring. I opened my locker, none of which had locks on them, to discover my Pokemon card binder, which I cherished more than my own life, was missing. Someone snuck in when we were out and stole it. I started to panic. I went over to a gym coach who was known to be a massive thorn, and he made an entire show of it. All the other boys were dressed and sitting on the benches, and I was still in my gym outfit. Coach berated me in front of the entire boys' locker room while I stripped down to my tidy whities crying my eyes out. All the other boys went quiet and gave me this look of disgust. It was one of the most uncomfortable moments of my life. Story 23. Harmonicas are nearly impossible to play poorly, but harmonicas come in different keys. When I was 14, I was supposed to play mine at a church potluck along with a girl on the electric piano and my brother on the guitar. My brother had tuned his guitar to the piano, but no one noticed that the keyboard scale setting had accidentally slid up to some rando key. First song, I came in full volume and clashed horribly. I was the only one playing in the correct key, but since I was the odd man out, it just sounded like I sucked at an instrument that kids can literally play through their nose. Instead of simply stopping and sitting it out like a normal person would, I went into full autopilot crisis mode and tore through Amazing Grace like a screeching alley cat. After the first song was over, we still didn't really know what went wrong. I apologized to the band, and thinking it had just been some kind of fluke, took a deep breath and plowed into the next song and did it again. 
Finally got a clue, walked away, and hid in the bathroom. Story 24. I am a corporate employee and my company has weekends off. This one weekend, I was out on a road trip with my boyfriend when one of my colleagues who was a workaholic and was working on a Saturday kept calling me. I received the phone every time and helped him out. However, one time I missed his call. Then I checked my phone to see a missed call and I said to my boyfriend that this MF keeps calling me and disturbing me on a weekend. I am not going to receive his flipping calls. I will address his stupid queries on Monday. I also used a lot of other rude words which I omitted here. My boyfriend too joined in. Then I checked my phone and saw that I was on a call with that guy for the past 50 seconds. I went numb and cut the call. I called him back hoping that he had not heard anything. He received and I said, Hi X, did you call me? And he repeated whatever I said on that call, only omitting the slangs. He had heard everything. I apologized and ended the call. It was really funny to my boyfriend, but I was scared. This was a few months ago. Now it is just a funny anecdote to tell. Story 25. There was this day when I had really, really bad diarrhea. I was about 10, and we were having a test, so I couldn't excuse myself to go to the bathroom. I held it in for what felt like hours while trying to work out multiplication tables with a film of sweat clinging all over my face. Finally, I finished the test. I ran towards the teacher's desk, put my test form in, and ran towards the toilet. From then on, it was just all instinct, and nothing mattered but getting my peach on that goddamn toilet bowl. I pulled hard on the door, spun around, and let my cow go before I touched the seat. Big mistake? The seat cover was down, so my peach ended up splurting and mashing my semi-liquid cow all over the seat, dripping down at the sides of the toilet in wet brown streaks. The stench was horrible, but for a moment I didn't care. I was just happy to finally be able to cow. It took me a few seconds before it hit me. How the fudge am I going to be able to get out of this mess? Know that I lived in the Philippines where toilet paper is not widely used. We had to use buckets of water to wash ourselves. And I can't really take a bath at school in the toilet stall. So what did I do? I improvised. I took off my socks and started wiping my mess with them. Not enough. So I took off my briefs, which were dirty anyway, and wiped some more. Close, but still not there. Finally, I took off the sleeveless shirt I wore under my school polo. I was done. I couldn't see any bits anymore. I sniffed myself, and I didn't smell that bad, or so I thought. Another big mistake, as I gingerly creeped back into my classroom, the teacher says, What is that smell? Did someone poop their pants? Everybody looked at me. I prayed that I was dreaming, that I would close my eyes, open them again, and realize that this is one of them weird nightmares. It wasn't. I was sent home. There was no other way to go home except for the bus. The driver smelled me and sent me to the back of the bus, ordering everyone else to move forward. And so I sat at the back, pockets filled with cow-stained socks, my bag filled with a cow-stained shirt, never knowing that I would still feel embarrassed for that day for years to come. Story 26. When I was little, my older sister was her high school's mascot. I was so proud of that and would go to all the school's games to watch her. One night during halftime at a basketball game, she asked me to go pick up some poster boards for her on the stage on the other side of the gym. Excitedly, I jogged over, feeling great to be able to help. I grabbed the posters and began to run back. On my way, a cheerleader sitting on a bench in the front row purposefully tripped me. I fell flat on my face in front of a bored, packed auditorium. The laughter was deafening. I gathered up the dropped posters and my composure and walked them to my sister in shame. Story 27. I would say this is an embarrassing story, but I slyly escaped the embarrassment, so I don't know what it is. I went to sleep nearly blackout drunk in this girl's bed that I had been seeing for a few months. Thank God she had to get up early to go to work and didn't want some morning fun because I woke up minutes before her in a huge pool of my own pour out the water. I quickly scoot to her side of the bed, taking advantage of her losing ground to turn off the alarm clock and begin to cuddle. I hold her close and tight. She tries to put her legs between mine, but I don't let my legs budge. I initiate nothing but a cuddle session for what felt like forever, but was probably just 20, 30 minutes. Finally, she slips out of bed to take a shower, but I still can't do anything until she leaves the house. So I lay in the bed for another flipping hour, waiting for her to finish showering, dressing, and doing whatever else girls do. She gives me a goodbye off to work kiss and it's on. Her day-to-day -day differs so she could either be back in an hour or two for lunch, or even worse, come back and lay down for a quick nap or not come back at all. I immediately strip the bed and turn the ceiling fan on high. With the sheets in the washer, I do some guilt cleaning and vacuuming. I cleaned her entire apartment within a couple hours. Sheets done, I flip the mattress, put sheets on, and about a half hour later, she returns to a spotless apartment. She thanks me for days with many blowjobs. She never found out. Story 28. When I was in middle school, I was hanging out at my dad's house while he was next door at a party. He had one of those rigged cable boxes, so free pay-per-view was at my fingertips. I looked around to see if anyone was around and was pleased to find I was all alone. 
I switched on some censored photos and was so thrilled at what I was seeing, I didn't even realize there was absolutely no sound. About 45 seconds later, my father bursts through the door and catches me. How did he find out, you ask? The sound was set to the rock speakers outside where he and all my neighbors heard the grunts and moans of my censored photos viewing. Story 29. In high school, I was in a class, and I drew a picture of my maths teacher being murdered or stabbed. I can't remember. A few hours later, another teacher whom I'd never met tracked me down and told me he found the picture, and I had to go and apologize to my maths teacher, or I'd face a week of detention. What follows is me approaching my maths teacher, I was a very shy person, who is Indian, relevant because of language barrier, and who was completely unaware of the picture in question, and trying to explain that I had drawn a picture of him being murdered, and that I was very sorry and I wouldn't do it again. There were several other students in the room. I didn't think it was possible to be as embarrassed as I was. My face was red and my eyes were watering. Words cannot describe story 30. When I was a junior or senior in high school, Weezer was coming in town, maladroit tour I think, maybe green. My GF was a huge fan and had sat out in front of the venue all day. I worked at a law firm downtown after school, so I walk over and joined her in line. We were the first ones in and posted up front and center. By the time the poor opener played, saves the day, they blew. The crowd was hella packed. I couldn't put my arms down. It was starting to be quite uncomfortable. Now back in these days, we wore baggier pants and mine were slipping. I was unable to pull them up due to the crowd surge. About two songs into Weezer's set, my girlfriend screams in pain. The crowd surged and pressed her into the barrier, breaking her rib. Security pulls her over the barrier. They start pulling me out, and as they do, my pants slip to my ankles. My underwear tears, and I flip over the barrier upside down with my junk, waving in the air just a few feet from River's face and in front of a packed-out show. Story 31 I had a panic attack while taking a quiz during my second semester of university. It ended with me having an orgasm. I hadn't in a month because I was in a dorm with community showers, and as I climaxed, I tried to hold it in for a long time, causing it to be explosive. I was completely flaccid, and there was so much semen that I thought I had pissed my pants until I could smell it. My hands were shaking nearly the entire time I waited for my classmates to hand in their quizzes and leave. My shorts were soft and thin, so there was a large spot and it dripped as I waddled back to my dorm. Fortunately, the walk was short, and it was dark outside, so I don't think anybody knew what happened, although my roommate, his girlfriend, and my TA definitely noticed that I was acting strange. For most of that semester, my heart would pound every time I entered that room as I worried about having another panic attack. Twice I could feel the onset. The first time I got up and went to the restroom before it got out of hand, and the second time I struggled through it. It took me five minutes to stop shaking, but I got over it without having another orgasm. I've never had a panic attack before or after these incidents. I've always been an anxious person, but it peaked my freshman year. Fortunately, it's been steadily declining since then. And while I'm still more anxious than the average person, I'm no longer an extraordinary case. Story 32. Freshman year of high school, I started dating this girl. Her parents didn't like me because I wasn't Jewish, though, and they forbid her from seeing me. As such, we had to sneak around town, school, etc. if we wanted to hang out. Late at nights, I would ride my bike to her house and sneak over for someone on one fun. We did it once in a while at first, but once I had it down to a science, we did it almost every night. One night, I went over her house and we were getting underway when her kid sister started coughing. This woke up her mother, who checked on my GF's room, realizing she was missing. We were downstairs. Her mother started coming down the stairs to check it out. My girlfriend ran up to head her off at the pass. But for whatever reason, her mother's nonsense detector was in top form that night. And she screamed, Get into your room now! And starts coming down the steps with her husband. At this point, I'm absolutely bricks. They came down the steps and started searching the room. I freaked out and hid behind the foosball table on my hands and knees. They stopped searching and stood still in the middle of the room. I could see their legs pointing towards me from under the table. For a good ten seconds, I knew they could see me behind the table, but I didn't want to move. Finally, they said, We can see you. Get up now. I got up so flipping slowly and sulked out of the house. That followed by the screams, contacting my parents, etc., etc., and it was the most embarrassing moment of my life. I can't even think about hiding behind that foosball table without cringing. On the flip side, it became a legendary story at school. Story 33? I was at a social gathering in college, just a small get-together with maybe 20 people. We were playing drinking games around the family room table, and a cute girl was sitting directly across from me. Some guy sits down next to her and is very aggressive, touchy-feely. Her responses are not exactly receptive, and this goes on for a bit. Eventually, the guy gets up and goes outside for a breathe, and I ask the girl, 
Hey, is that guy bothering you? She covers her mouth and laughs in an OMG, did he just ask me that? kind of way. She runs outside to join the guy who I then learn is her boyfriend of several years. I felt like a douche. Story 34. I threw my first house party in my sophomore year of high school. I hadn't had much experience drinking prior to this, but my parents were out of town for the weekend, and I was ready to kick peach. There were probably three or four dozen people in attendance. At some point in the night, I made a much overdue fifth trip to bathroom. After this night, I instituted a three-trip limit before I stopped drinking. Whilst in the bathroom, I forgot myself. Thinking I was there to shower, I began taking off my clothes. By the time I made it to my briefs, I turned to notice the open door. A crowd of 10, 15 people had gathered in the foyer, silently holding their breath, watching me undress. As soon as I made eye contact, everyone screamed with laughter. My old high school buddies still call me Man Bear Pig. Story 35. In 11th grade, there was a contest at my school called Name of School Idol. I figured it'd be fun, so a few of my friends and I entered. However, I was only told that I had won a day before the ceremonies. As well, the song had already been chosen, and I was to sing John Travolta's part of Summer Lovin' from Greece. Okay, I thought, I'll just listen to it as soon as I get home, and set it on loop all night. So after hours of hearing that godforsaken song, I feel as if I have a pretty decent grasp of it. I show up the next day, go through a run before the show with the girl, and we nail it. I figured all my practice the day before paid off. Fast forward an hour to the actual show. I get up on stage, hear the awful karaoke rendition of the song, and completely forget how it goes. I messed up up singing Summer Lovin' in front of my entire school, and simultaneously made the girl I was singing with look just as awful. To this day, thinking of Greece makes me sick to my stomach. Story 36. The most embarrassing overall was when I passed out for no apparent reason in my health class. I wasn't even paying attention, so it wasn't the material and had to be taken to the office in a wheelchair since they wouldn't let me walk. Another one that was embarrassing at the time, but now I laugh about, was when I was snowboarding two years ago. I was chilling at my local hill and hitting the jumps on our terrain park for most of the day since there weren't too many people around. I had landed probably 95% of my jumps when I saw this pretty cute girl sitting at the top of the hill watching everyone. Being a dumb 17-year-old, I decided that I was going to hit the jump faster than I have before to, you know, impress her. I line up the run to the jump just fine and got some decent air, but for some inexplicable reason, I decided to look back and see if she was watching. Needless to say, this is a bad idea when you are in the air. After glancing back at her and seeing her watch, I turned my head to watch my landing and look down the hill. It turns out that I had lifted my legs up just enough to rotate my board, and I landed on the edge and the toes of my boots. I lost my balance because of this, dropped to my knees with my trailing knee hitting first, and causing me to cartwheel three or four times before landing on my back and sliding to a stop. Embarrassing and painful, right? I, of course, try to salvage whatever level of cool I still have going and go to hit an A-frame at the bottom of the hill. When I hit it, the front of my board came to a stop and the back spun up next to it, so I was turned 90 degrees to the slope. I caught the top of the A-frame and did I faceplant on the back side of it. I then said fudge it and went home sore, bruised, and with a shattered ego. Story 37 I was in a pet store with some friends in a mall some years ago, back in my high school days. If I recall correctly, we went in with, with some girls we'd met. Obviously, trying to score some sensitive animal lover points, I guess. This was around the early 80s, I think, so of course I'm rocking the blazer as was the style at the time. I sound like Grandpa Simpson. I was just standing there when I felt a pull on my sleeve. One of these big parrot-looking birds, not sure what it was, but it was quite large, had grabbed my sleeve with its claw and wasn't letting go. I'm mildly concerned. It decides to grab me with both feet and start slowly making its way up my sleeve. I'm am slightly more concerned. I have no idea how the hell to grab the thing to stop it. When I tried, it kind of hissed at me. It worked its way slowly up to my shoulder and onto my back. At this point, I'm partially hunched over and looking for an employee to rescue me. Too embarrassed to call out, I finally make eye contact with a guy behind the register, and I'm giving him the, uh, help, look, no response. Now the bird's getting bored, I guess, so it starts biting my ear. It freaking hurt. So here's this guy trying, failing, to not look like a complete idiot, with a big effing parrot thing on his back biting him, hunched over going, ah, ha, ah, get it off, get it off, pretty sure I heard some little kid shout, mommy, look at the guy with the bird attacking him, cool. At this point, of course, everyone in the store is watching me, and a crowd has started to form outside. I am apparently very amusing to watch. I'm freaking out for a good five minutes or so, felt like an hour. One of store staff finally gets off his peach and wanders over and extracts the bird from my back, to much applause. He actually seems pissed at me and mentions, You're not supposed to be touching them, man. If I hadn't been so embarrassed, I probably would have told him I didn't touch the damn thing, but, 
Well, I just wanted to disappear. I wasn't in the mood to come up with a great comeback. Afterwards, my friends and the girls we were trying to hook up with all wanted to go to the food court. So I got to spend the rest of the day with everyone going by our table pointing out bird guy. My friends, being typical friends, made sure the story made the rounds the following week. Glad there were no cell phones or internet back then. I'd have probably gotten plenty of YouTube hits. Story 38. Knew a guy once who used to play b-ball well in high school. Grand final, his new girlfriend in the stands watching. The ball arrives in his hands and he leaps up to shoot. Mid-leap, he's spontaneously himself. The surprised turd slithers down his shorts and makes a grand entrance into the world. In surprise, he misses the shot. Lands on the cow he just birthed and slips on it. The crowd erupts in hilarity cringe. Insult to injury. He has to clean up the turd before the game can continue, as a thousand eyes watch. Steaming turd atop the insult. Girlfriend dumps him instantly for becoming school pariah. I'm surprised he managed to live through it. Story 39. I used to golf daily during the summer mornings in high school. My brother was too young to stay home by himself while me and my parents were gone, so a relative often came over to watch him. I took a shower and realized that I had forgotten to bring my clean clothes to my room the night before. Seeing as my mom was sleeping and my dad was in the shower, I walked downstairs to the laundry room. I was staring out the window at a beautiful dad and did a little happy dance excited to golf. I get about five feet from my laundry room and hear a newspaper ruffle directly in front of me. There sits my aunt, who I realized had to have seen this whole ordeal. I get dressed and run outside and wait 20 minutes for my ride not caring about grabbing water or breakfast because I was so embarrassed. This was about 8 to 10 years ago, and do this day, it gets brought up at every family gathering. Story 40. The things I rehash the most and still cringe about. 1. At my grandmother's funeral, I got really upset and was suddenly inspired to speak. They had allotted time if anyone wanted to say anything. I, however, didn't really think about what I was going to say and was an emotional mess and ended up starting strong, but just trailing off in a blubbering, mumbling string of fails. This day was, however, for my grandmother, not for me, which makes me double cringe that this is what I remember about it. 2. I did TV for two years. Direct TV tried to, to do this thing with video games like they did with poker putting it on TV as sport for entertainment. It was called the Championship Gaming Series. They had teams for like 8 to 10 major cities, and it was a really exciting major thing in my life. The first season, our team won, and in the finals, I kicked Flipping Peach. I played the fighting game Dead or Alive 4. In the second season, our team was basically burnt out and tried to care, but we all really just ended up failing over and over again. A few of us did okay occasionally in our individual games throughout the season, but for the most part, None of us really seemed to care anymore. We had so many chances to make it into the final, but we just kept flipping it up. The problem was, I failed every time. I think I won like 320 games the whole season. I was in this horrible depression during that time. I tried to care, and I did my best, but I just sucked. So even if it started with one of our team members winning their game, I would flipping fudge up the whole momentum and loose, and then everyone else would follow. It flipping sucked. I kept letting the whole entire team down for months and I just couldn't get out of my depression. I still think of how poor I did and how it made me feel two years later. Story 41. I had convinced myself to go back to the gym, change my life, and get in shape. I'd been going for about a week and was feeling great about myself until the last day. I was on the treadmill, blasting some fish, listening to You Enjoy Myself. I felt a fart coming and was confident it would simply dissipate, both smell and noise amongst the commotion of the gym as it was a zoo on that day. It was not a fart. It was horrible. Horrible diarrhea. I hit the emergency stop button and turned around. All eyes on me. So what do I? Flipping book it, of course. People yelling at me and the like. I can only wonder how bewildering it must have been to see me. And my poor self running out at Mach 5, leaving cow stains all over the place. Never went back to that gym. Took a two-hour commute to another one across town. 